So we're going to have toilet water in a tap, California? Really? How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan. And today we got to talk about California's plan to turn your sewage water, your toilet water from the drain in your house, your shower drain, your kitchen sink, your toilet. They want to transform that water into tap water. So when you go to your kitchen sink and put a glass up under your faucet, and turn the water on and get a nice chug of water that could be repurposed water that came from the toilet that came from the drain that really shouldn't be in your home for human consumption. Now they said that it's going to be an extensive filtration process. They're going to go through all avenues to make sure the water is safe to make sure the water is good. But here is the question before we get to the video. Here's a question. Do you want to drink that? I'm not really sure that I want to drink repurposed sewage water, repurposed waste water. Now, before I go any further into my opinion about it, let's get to the video. Of course, this will be in the description if you want to check it out there. If you're on IG, visit a link in the bio, go to the corresponding article on the website. But without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. Local water agencies across California could soon be turning sewage water into drinking water. It is a change the State Water Resources Control Board is going to consider this week. But the process isn't actually as new as you might think, and some water districts have been pushing to be doing these kinds of practices for a long time. And one of those is the Santa Clara Water Valley District. And joining us right now is their assistant officer, Kirsten Struve. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate it. Good morning. So it's a buzzy headline that you'll see a lot where people say, you know, toilet water to tap water, something like that. I can imagine that probably drives you nuts because there's a lot of stuff that happens in between. Well, yes. I mean, again, there's a lot of filtration. There's a whole big process and they say it costs a lot of money. It's very expensive. OK, but at the end of the day, we're talking about recycling water that you flush down the toilet, that you pour down a drain. We're talking about recycling that water for you to drink for you to use to what to, to to wash your face, brush your teeth, bathe your body. If you got little kids, you putting them in that. And then also, I have a question: Could it also be for commercial purposes? Because a lot of this water, the bottled water, a little birdie told me that this ain't nothing but tap water conveniently placed into bottles for your consumption. So, are we going to have these companies use that same water and put it into bottles of water? You think you're getting something that comes from the springs in New Zealand, but really you get something that came from some dope fiends toilet in uh, Fresno, California, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So I digress. Right. It, it does. Uh, it doesn't um, provide a very helpful image for people wanting to drink this water. So what really happens is that um, water that goes down the toilet or the uh, showers or in people's businesses is treated at a wastewater treatment plant. And there it is already 98% clean and some of it gets reused in parks and playing fields and uh, cooling towers and the rest gets released to the bay or the ocean. And then we take this already very clean water and use three additional steps to purify it at our Silicon Valley Advanced Water Purification Center. Mm -hmm. Now let's pause right here. One thing that I remember from a lot of the pandemic coverage is that they're able to tell if a certain population, a certain region has elevated levels of the virus due to examining water. Okay, so maybe at a water treatment facility or wherever they're able to actually study it, they can tell, okay, we have high levels of C-19. We have high levels of this virus, of that virus. We have high levels of, they can detect drugs sometimes in the water. So they know if there's like um, an epidemic of drug use due to what's being found in the water. So my question to Ms. Uh, Kirsten Struve would be, are we going to be able to eliminate all the trace elements of drugs, uh, C-19 and other viruses from the water? You say it's very clean, 98% clean. What does the 2% have in it? Is it, is 98% clean water dangerous to humans? And if so, why is it dangerous? And how are those dangerous elements removed from the water? I think that would be a pretty good question to ask her if I had the privilege to interview her. But I digress. Right now, what we use the water for is just to increase the quality of that non-potable water going to the parks. Um, 
but uh, tomorrow's decision um, will enable us to develop a project where we could use it in the potable supply um, with some additional treatment, of course, that's what the regulations require. And it will be a really important step to ensure we have climate resilient water supply in California. Yeah, because the climate resilient. OK, so is that what we're going to do? We're going to try to cite climate change. We're going to try to say, hey, you know what? We got climate change going on. There's droughts and everything else. So we need to use this water that came from the local fentanyl smokers toilet. You're going to purify over and over again. And trust, we're going to comply with the government's regulations. Everything's going to be good. There's no quid pro quo going on. Ain't no money shuffling going on. The water will be 100% safe. Okay, I'll take your word for it, but let's keep on rocking. The, the big picture is we need to be able to figure out ways to keep our drinking water supply going, and this is one of them in our state. That's right. Yeah, it really will help um, to have a new supply of water, you know, in the face of climate change because it will be uh, locally controlled and very drought proof and um, yeah, we, we're looking forward to tomorrow's decision. Your agency has been pushing for this for 13 years. So this isn't something that people thought of last week. No, that's right. But, um, you know, of course, taking such a step is um, while it's really important for our water supply, we also make to have to make sure public health is always protected and yes. the water is always safe to drink. So that's, uh, you know, we appreciate the regulators taking time and prioritizing and making sure that these regulations um, will enable the water supply and keep the public safe. You mentioned that um, you can already get it to 98 percent clean to be used in the recreational ways. What's the extra step that it takes to get it to drinking water quality? There we go. Great question. See, you, you're right here with me. I'm on the same page. OK, what's the extra step needed to get it to being potable, to be able to for, for you to use for, for cooking, cleaning, bathing, for drinking? What is the extra step? And also, what does the extra steps or step, whatever, whatever one, singular plural, what do they eliminate in the, the next part of the purification process? Um, it will take several additional processes, but one of them, is, uh, the, the heart of it is called reverse osmosis. And um, it basically is a filter so small that only water molecules pass through. And it's already used um, around the world and on the International Space Stations to create oh, water there. That's yeah. interesting. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Kirsten. We appreciate it. And uh, good luck with the project. And uh, we appreciate you breaking it down for us today. All right. So there we have it. OK, your water that you flush down the toilet, uh, the things you pour down a drain, whatever. So you might be pouring paint. <laughs> you might be pouring uh, drugs down there, pills, whatever. All of that, we're going to send it to a treatment plant. We're going to get 98% clean. Then we're going to do a lot of different things. Reverse osmosis. Only water molecules can pass through. And then it'll be clean. Don't worry about it. So that is what's on the horizon in California. And again, my question from the very start for you guys, do you want to drink that? I mean, if it's me, I prefer not to. I prefer to have my water just naturally sourced. I think there's ways you could cut down on water use. Like a lot of people, um, they are using a lot of water to water their lawns. Like you can you can preserve water in other ways. I'm not quite sure about this process. Or maybe you could use, again, they say to use the, the non-potable water for other applications. Use it for those applications. But drinking water, I, I don't know. I'm not really comfortable. But maybe I'm wrong. And I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? What's your take on what California is proposing using recycled water from your drains, your sewers, etc. So you can have that in your house to brush your teeth, to drink, to bathe, to cook, possibly going into commercial uses, bottled water, because sometimes you're not getting quote unquote spring water. You're getting water straight from the tap. OK, so wherever they are, it could be California, it could be any particular state, you could just be getting recycled water from that local area into your drinking water. Okay. You are already worried about plastics and the BPAs and things of this nature. How would the treated water react to the plastics? How would it react to glass? How would it react to some of these older pipe infrastructures? How would that really work? That would be my particular question, but whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe.
Peace.